On behalf of the University of Colorado College of Nursing, I welcome you to the 2022 Convocation Ceremony to honor our CU nursing graduates. My name, My name is Christine Gauthier, Associate Professor and Faculty Executive Committee Chair, and I am honored to serve as the Marshal for today's ceremony. Before we begin, please join us for the National Anthem. Please stand. Thank you, you may now be seated. As we start today's ceremony, we humbly acknowledge that the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus is located on the traditional and contemporary homelands of indigenous peoples. Our campus resides on unceded lands of the Arapaho people established to the Treaty of Fort Laramie in 1851. We recognize the enduring presence of more than 40,000 indigenous peoples in the greater Denver area. The sprawling urban American Indian and Alaska native presence in Denver consists of other tribes native to Colorado, such as Apache, Comanche, Shoshone, and Ute community members. Yet is now home to numerous other indigenous people from many of the 560 plus federally recognized tribes in this country. Together, we acknowledge the history of genocide and ongoing systematic inequities while respecting treaties made on this territory as a step towards reconciliation and strengthening relationships with indigenous peoples. We give thanks to the past, present, and future stewards of this land and respect all tribal nations' sovereignty and right to self-determination. We recognize the lessons, including many medical and public health, indigenous communities have offered and continue to teach us. At this time, I'd like to introduce today's platform party. Will each member please stand briefly to be recognized as I call your name. Dr. Elias Provencio Vasquez, Dean of the College of Nursing. Amy Barton, Senior Associate Dean of Faculty and Students, Professor, Daniel and Janet Mordecai, Endowed Chair in Rural Health Nursing. Dr. Kelly Stamp, Associate Dean of Academic Programs. Dr. Rosario Medina, Associate Dean of Clinical and Community Affairs. Dr. Teresa Hernandez, Associate Dean of Research and Scholarship. Dr. Jacqueline Jones, Assistant Dean of PhD Program. Dr. Laura Rosenthal, Assistant Dean of the DNP Program. Dr. Tammy Spencer, Assistant Dean of the Undergraduate Program. Amy Loomis, incoming president of the CU Nursing Alumni Association. Karen Zink, our 2022 keynote speaker. 
Dr. Kim Paxton, Assistant Professor of Clinical Teaching. Convocation is a special time to celebrate achievements of our graduate, graduating students. You, the graduates, are here today in large part because all of the love and support you've received from family, friends, and faculty. You're also here today because of your own determination and desire to learn, grow, and achieve your goals. To the new nurses, welcome to nursing. To our other graduates, welcome to your new roles and responsibilities. We need your mind, vision, creativity, dedication, and courage to advance the profession of nursing. We also need your idealism, advocacy, innovation, passion, and excitement. We are all proud of you and we celebrate your accomplishments today. Before we would begin, I'd like to make mention of a special guest in attendance today, Robin Bruce, President of the Colorado Council of Black Nurses is with us. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to recognize our faculty. The faculty of the College of Nursing are nationally and internationally recognized for excellence in teaching, research, and practice. My faculty colleagues have taught many of today's graduating students. I'd like the faculty to please stand and be recognized. Leading today's ceremony, I am pleased to introduce Dr. Eli Provencio Vasquez, University of Colorado's College of Nursing Dean. Dean Provencio Vasquez has been a clinician, educator, administrator, and research, researcher. He's well known nationally and internationally for his work with at-risk women and their families. He's an experienced neonatal and pediatric nurse practitioner. His background and expertise is primary care and developmental assessments of HIV and drug exposed infants, children, and adolescents. Dr. Provencio Vasquez is a pioneer in creating innovative nursing approaches, including home interventions for mothers with substance use disorders and their children. He's published and presented in numerous nursing community and interdisciplinary forums nationally and internationally. Dean Eli is a first generation college graduate of Mexican immigrants. Becoming the first would emerge as a theme as he became the first Latino male to earn a doctorate in nursing and head a nursing school in the United States. Please join me in welcoming Dean Eli to the stage. Thank you all very much. Good morning, graduates, family, friends, faculty, and staff. Today we mark our first in-person spring ceremony in three years. All right. Woo! It is so great to be present today to celebrate you, our CU College of Nursing students. I am honored to have this opportunity to address you. As mentioned, my name is Elias Provencio Vasquez, and I am the proud Dean of the great CU College of Nursing. All right. <laughs> Unexpected and unforgettable are two words that describe the past two years. The pandemic has changed us, challenged us to think differently, reignite our grit, and come together to create a new normal for our world. One thing is sure, change is standard, and that is a very valuable lesson. Eric Hoffer stated, in times of change, learners inherit the earth, while the learned find themselves beautifully equipped to deal with the world that no longer exists. We have seen this happen 
what we thought was standard is no longer. Our processes and systems have adapted and changed and it was necessary. Some of that change is here to stay and that's not all bad. Our students and faculty have proven that when we come together, we can overcome unexpected hurdles and emerge stronger, boldly transforming and shaping the future of healthcare. I have come to realize during the global coronavirus pandemic that our people truly make a difference. There's a phrase in Greek, the University of Colorado has etched on the seal that graces your diploma cover. In English, it translates as let your, let your light shine. And that's exactly what you, our students, faculty and staff have done and continue to do every day. Here are a few highlights of remarkable things that we that have happened at our College of Nursing during this time. Faculty transitioned to online education without missing a beat. Our simulation team met the clinical needs of our students when hospital partners were forced to shut down access. When the threat of our students not graduating or delaying graduation, our faculty and staff created a way forward. Our nurse-led clinics ramped up telehealth operations and found innovative ways to serve the needs of our community. You and your classmates stepped up during the extraordinary times. Students volunteered to give COVID vaccine, run clinics, and obtain donations for N95 masks to help their fellow healthcare workers with protection when PPE was running low. Your courage, patience, and ability to roll with ever-changing rules and attitudes will serve you well in the years to come. Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. And that's still true today. We are so proud of our trailblazing legacy at CU College of Nursing. During its 124 years, the college has experienced many firsts that have shaped the nursing profession, including the invention of nurse practitioner, the creation of the Center of, for Nursing Research and Human Caring, and the start of nurse-led clinical practice sites in our community. We even faced the first worldwide pandemic with the Spanish flu of 1918. Throughout it all, we've learned very valuable lessons about humanity and our calling. What we have inherited in the past generations, we will pass on to the next generation of nurses, our students. The nursing profession is truly extraordinary. You have chosen to pursue an occupation that combines critical thinking with compassion, experience, with innovation and knowledge with power. Graduates, you are preparing for a career in a profession that will bring you both challenges and many, many memorable rewards. In closing, I would like to share a poem titled, Think Like a Tree by Karen Schrag. Soak up the sun, affirm life's magic, be graceful in the wind. Stand tall after a storm. Feel refreshed after it rains. Grow strong without notice. Be prepared for each season. Provide shelter to strangers. Hang tough through a cold spell. Emerge renewed with the first signs of spring. Stay deeply rooted while reaching for the sky. Be still long enough to hear your own leaves rustling. Congratulations again to you, our amazing students, family, and friends. We are so proud of you now that you are CU College of Nursing alumni. We wish you luck and Godspeed. Thank you.
Thank you, Dean Eli, for your thoughtful words. The next segment of today's ceremony are the 2022 Student Faculty Awards. Dr. Amy Barton, Senior Associate Dean of Faculty and Students, will lead today's presentation. Today, I have the pleasure of recognizing some of my amazing faculty colleagues. Each year, the President and Chancellor provide awards to recognize faculty who have made significant and impactful contributions in the classroom, to the community, and profession. The graduates here today were provided with an opportunity to nominate those faculty who they deemed the most worthy of consideration. Each of these awards comes with a monetary gift. I am pleased to recognize Dr. Teresa Connolly as this year's recipient of the President's Teaching Award. Unfortunately, Dr. Connolly could not be here with us today, so we will accept this award on her behalf. Additionally, I would also like to recognize Dr. Joanne Cronover. She is the recipient of the Chancellor's Teaching Award. Dr. Cronover, please come forward to receive your award and be recognized. Each year, the Dean's Office awards two faculty at the undergraduate and graduate levels to recognize them for the excellence demonstrated in the academic setting. It is my honor to present the Dean's Award for Teaching Excellence in Undergraduate Programs to Patrick Luna. <laughs> <laughs> and the Dean's Award for Teaching Excellence in Graduate Programs is presented to Denise Smith. Unfortunately, she could not join us today and we will accept this award in her honor. Congratulations to all of our faculty award recipients. It is now my honor to introduce today's College of Nursing Convocation keynote speaker, Karen Zink. Many women in Southwest Colorado have Karen Zink to thank for providing medical care that wouldn't have been available without her. Ms. Zink, who earned a master's degree from the College of Nursing in 1987, is the founder of the Durango-based Southwest Women's Health Associate one of the only clinics in the area offering primary and preventive care for women, as well as gynecological care, including endometrial biopsies, colposcopies, and contraceptive care. When it opened, the clinic was only the second in the United States staffed entirely by nurse practitioners. Ms. Zink worked with the Colorado Nurses Association to bring full practice authority to nurse practitioners and served on congressional committees to ensure that nurse practitioners have the freedom to provide healthcare services independently. As a native of Southwest Colorado, she understood that many rural Coloradans have no readily available access to a clinician and that a nurse practitioner could be a solution to the state's healthcare provider shortage. At the clinic, Ms. Zink mentors CU nursing students to ensure there's a pipeline of new nurses focused on community nursing and rural populations. Today, the clinic provides holistic care and has a market offering healthy and affordable food choices. She's been recognized by the American Nursing Association for sustained contributions to the profession and by her community as best nurse with a Reader's Choice Award from a local newspaper. Ms. Zink's interest in nursing was inspired by her mother, Marilyn Mason Short. 
a nursing leader who helped to set up the first emergency department at Mercy Hospital in Durango. Ms. Zink started her medical education at Mercy. She went on to earn her BSN from Loretto Heights in Denver, and then earned her master's degree from the CU College of Nursing. At the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, when the Durango community suffered a shortage of personal protective equipment, Ms. Zink acquired vital safety gear from overseas. As soon as vaccines became available, she created a rollout plan so that residents of Durango had easy and equitable access. It's my honor and privilege to call Ms. Karen Zink to the podium to deliver the 2022 Convocation keynote address. Thank you very much. It is my pleasure and honor to share this day, this moment with you. Congratulations to each of you. You entered into a nursing education program before the pandemic changed the way the world operated. Your education may have been put on hold or it may have presented itself in a way that was unfamiliar and difficult to navigate. Accomplishing your educational goals under normal circumstances is grueling enough. The fact that you persevered in uncharted waters speaks volumes about your grit and determination. Nurses have been the constant thread in the fabric of our system, especially in these trying times. As I prepared for this address, my mind reflected back over 50 plus years of education and experiences with nursing. I share my journey with you in hopes that you will be inspired to pursue what if opportunities as you embark on your future and career in this incredible field that you have chosen. May you find your own journey filled with one thing leads to another, experiences that are fulfilling and rewarding. My choices were somewhat limited as my high school career came to an end. This is where my journey in nursing begins. In 1968, my high school counselor advised me that I was not college material. This news prompted me to choose a diploma nursing program at Mercy Hospital School of Nursing in Denver. From the time of my acceptance into the school and the beginning of my freshman year, this program was affiliated with Regis College, now known as Regis University. I was headed into quite a heavy load, taking electives at a private Catholic boys college involving 12 semester hours of English, sociology, psychology, chemistry, anatomy, and physiology. The nursing program required another 12 semester hours at Mercy. 40 students began the year. Nine months later, only 20 students remained. The rules at Mercy Hospital were rigid and did not make sense to me. Somehow I had survived and was among the graduates from the program. My disappointment in the hospital experience opened the door for my first, what if? What if I obtain a BSN and went into school nursing or public health. So I applied to CU School of Nursing and wasn't accepted. Correct, I was not accepted into CU School of Nursing because I did not have a 4.0 GPA. I turned my attention to staff nursing, believing it was the best path forward and was hired at St. Joseph's Hospital. I loved the environment there. They offered a comprehensive orientation program for new graduates a recipe for success. Following orientation, I accepted the evening shift and a float position. I floated to every unit in the hospital except psychiatry and the operating room. There were scary situations as I floated, but I had good mentors and learned that having a mentor and being a mentor was essential to learning and overcoming scary moments. My desire to obtain the BSN intensified I worked part-time and intended, attended Loretto Heights College, eventually learning, earning the BSN I so wanted. My mother, an influential nurse, impeccable role model, and a strict advocate of taking responsibility for professional nursing, hear that, gave me a membership to the Colorado Nurses Association upon my graduation from my diploma program. This gift presented my next what if opportunity. What if I get involved? I met mentors and learned about nursing leadership. I held offices, 
published my district's quarterly newsletter, attended meetings, events, and conventions. I attended many events with my mom. I was a sponge and delighted in soaking it all up. I helped write the guidelines for the Colorado Nurses Association to offer approved continuing education credits. One thing led to another, and I became an advocate for the profession, advancing legislative agendas to further opportunities in nursing practice. In our mid-20s, we decided to start a family. Heidi arrived soon, and I quickly became captivated with pregnancy, birthing classes, and breastfeeding. A difficult C-section birth inspired me to become a certified nurse practitioner. While taking some time to stay at home with my daughter, I received a call from St. Joe's asking if I would take a part-time emergency department position. I leapt at the chance to put my prior nursing experience to work in this new setting. 18 months and another baby girl later, I was transferred to the birthing center at St. Joe's, another dream job. We moved back to our hometown of Durango to be near our families. My hopes for a hospital staff nurse position in Durango were initially dashed by the director of nursing who read my resume and spotted me as a rebel rouser. Okay, she was right. One thing leads to another, and I ended up teaching in the local LPN program for a few years. Eventually, I got a part-time staff position in the birthing center at that hospital. I taught childbirth classes to 2,000 women and their labor support partners over 18 years. Many of these women later became patients in my private practice. In 1983, the University of Colorado recruited me to facilitate their first baccalaureate nursing outreach program in Durango. It was a BSN completion program for nurses with diplomas or associate degrees in nursing. Another what if. What if I pulled this off? I was relentless in recruiting nurses for the program, enrolling about 20. It was a success. My bonus was working with Dr. Jean Watson and the wonderful nursing faculty. Several of us went on to a master's in community health nursing, the next outreach program offered by the University of Colorado. It was my great fortune to attend graduate school while living in my rural hometown. I was hesitant about the GRE, but Dr. Watson told me to just go for it and see how I scored. I scored high enough. I wanted to become a women's health nurse practitioner and was interested in community health nursing, the program offered by CU. Due to the very creative faculty, and hear this too, the very creative faculty, I was able to take enough elective courses from the Ambulatory Women's Health Program to be eligible for the National Certification Corporation Board Exam to become a certified women's health nurse practitioner. At age 36, I had completed my formal education. I landed a job with two wonderful OBGYNs and then began a private practice in collaboration with Dr. Lloyd Lifton in 1989. We were colleagues until his retirement. Lloyd later served on the Nurse Physician Advisory Task Force for Colorado Healthcare, helping to open the door for autonomous practice by qualified nurse practitioners in 2010. What if I established one of the first NP owned and operated practices in the United States? So I did. My practice, Southwest Women's Health, is strong and healthy today, serving about 3,000 women. In 1980, I volunteered for the first Nine Health Fair, a Colorado pilot project introduced by the NIH. I'm not an early riser by nature, but I showed up at 6.30 a.m. and was asked if I could draw blood. I happened to be an excellent stick and drew blood for our local Nine Health Fair for about 10 years, became the lab supervisor for many years. One thing leads to another, I became the medical coordinator. What if we find a case of hemochromatosis, diabetes, liver disease, hyperlipidemia, and someone can make changes to have better quality of life and prevent disease or progressive illness? My own mother-in-law, Ruby, who had no symptoms of illness, turned up with abnormal liver enzymes. We discovered through liver biopsy that she had metastatic melanoma. She declined treatment and had six months to live just the way she wanted. 
I helped start health fairs in the surrounding communities of Silverton, Cagosa Springs, and Cortez. I have met many wonderful people by organizing community health projects. It has been like planning a big party for people that I love to work with while providing service for the community. As nurses, we have tremendous capacity for joy, satisfaction, and yes, some sorrows. We are allowed into the most intimate and tender places in the lives of patients and families. What if we take hospice training and become good at assisting with providing a kind, comfortable, and dignified experience as someone is dying? What if the patient, family, and loved ones have peace of mind, time to prepare for and participate in fulfilling remaining wishes? What if we take advantage of work and community opportunities to learn and grow? I took on my biggest and most challenging assignment when I experienced a damn it moment during the pandemic on December 30th, 2020. Vaccine was sitting on shelves, but mass vaccination was not yet out of the gate. What if I could help increase vaccination in my community? There were no apparent mass vaccination plans at federal, state, or local levels. I contacted the local health department and they gave me the go ahead to proceed. I called the local health fair leadership team and we agreed to put together a mass vaccination program for our county. The health department had access to the Pfizer vaccine and provided it. We figured that if our team could draw blood for 1600 participants in five hours, which we did at one health fair, we could give a lot of shots. The pandemic was raging and most of the people I needed on the team would be at home for the New Year's holiday. I have a robust Rolodex collected over years in my cell phone. I called everyone that I thought could help, including city and county officials, police department, sheriff's department, and the fire department. We prepared a point of dispensing document, set up a registration mechanism, trained volunteers, prepared for winter weather, procured supplies, and provided volunteer support. Our first vaccinations were given January 16th, 18 days after the damn it moment. Within a few short weeks, we had nearly 400 volunteers. Lots of heads were spinning in disbelief at how quickly things came together. The volunteers were overjoyed. We had paramedics and an ambulance standing by at each clinic. Our maximum throughput was 264 people in an hour. We had expert nurse practitioners, physicians, flight nurses, and experienced critical care and med search nurses leading the charge. I had physicians call me to volunteer saying, I will do anything you tell me to. Wow. Everyone left egos at the door and came on board two retired flight nurses trained vaccinators and monitored performance. We trained a surplus of volunteers who were then deployed to neighboring towns. I had acquired Governor Polis's personal cell phone number for my Rolodex. You never know. According to Pfizer protocol, if there was not a complete dose remaining in a vial as we were drawing up, we were supposed to toss it. That ticked me off. We had people on a wait list for vaccinations and we were throwing vaccine away. I thought maybe the governor could cover for me if we used all of the vaccine from each file. I stepped into the closet and rang Governor Polis. He answered, sounding a bit perplexed at getting a call from Southwest Women's Health on a Saturday or anytime, I suppose. He agreed that I could put him on speakerphone with our team. I stepped out of the closet and we had a chat with the governor. One lady sat down for her vaccination with some trepidation. The provider asked her how she was doing. She said, I'm a little nervous. He said, I'm about to give you a dose of liquid hope. It was such a joy to give hope during a very dark time. The volunteers loved giving hope. They gave everything, experience, love, discipline, commitment in all, we vaccinated on nine Saturdays, giving a total of 6,309 doses. Eventually, the health department was able to take over using many of our volunteers and our site plan. What an incredibly fulfilling and rewarding experience that last what if was. Mm -hmm. 
You have chosen and prepared for an open ended profession that has limitless opportunities for career progression, personal development, and abundant joy. Nurses work in every aspect of healthcare. We are crucial in delivering care, improving systems, removing disparities in access to healthcare, and improving the health of those around us. Take good care of yourself and surround yourself and fill that Rolodex with inspiring and supportive people. Ask yourself, what if, often, and take advantage of the opportunities that present. I wish you blessings with next steps as you embark on or continue your career in nursing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for those inspiring words.